Welcome. My name is Heather Kelly, and today I'll be explaining the concept of plane changes. First of all, why do we need plane changes? Well, look at the following picture. It's depicting a launch from Cape Canaveral, America's, America's eastern launch range, whose latitude is 28.5 degrees north. I'll explain why that's important momentarily. The top orbit, in green, shows a launch northeast from the Cape. The middle orbit, in white, shows a launch due east from the Cape. And the bottom orbit, in yellow, shows a launch southeast from the Cape. So now let's look at the ground track of an orbiter of two of each of these different launches. I want to point to your attention that none of these orbits, even the one where we launch southeast, can be or can have an inclination that's any lower than the latitude of the launch site, 28.5 degrees. This is because the center of the Earth is the center of the orbit. An object in orbit has to go as far south as it went north and vice versa. So to answer my question, why do we need a plane change? Well, one of the main reasons is that we may want an orbit with an inclination that is lower than the latitude of our launch site. And we can't launch directly into that orbit. A plane change will allow us to change our inclination and, if desired, our right ascension ascending node in order to accomplish our mission. Let's first discuss a simple plane change. Say your satellite is in the green orbit, revolving around Earth with an inclination of 28.5 degrees. But maybe your mission requires that you be in an equatorial orbit, like the orbit in yellow, with an inclination of zero degrees. If so, you can burn propellant at the location where the two orbits cross in order to put your satellite on a new orbit. We call this a simple plane change. Let's calculate how much delta V, or fuel, we need to do this simple plane change. First of all, we need to know the difference between these two orbits and that difference in angle space is this angle theta. For example, if the green orbit, our initial orbit, is inclination of 28.5 degrees, and our final orbit is at an inclination of zero degrees, then theta is 28.5 degrees. The velocity of your initial orbit and the velocity uh, is vi, and the velocity of your final orbit is vf. It's interesting to note that V initial and V final have the same magnitude, they're just in different directions. The delta V which is required to get from the initial orbit to the final orbit is shown here as delta V S. The S stands for simple. By drawing a line down the center of the triangle, we create two right triangles. And this allows us to find our equation for delta V S, or delta V simple which is 2 times velocity initial times the sine of theta over 2. If your satellite is in a polar orbit, you can also do a simple plane change in order to change the right ascension ascending node. Just like with the inclination change, you can conduct a simple plane change in the location where the two orbits cross, in this case over the poles. If your satellite is not in a polar orbit and you do a simple plane change like this, you can change both the inclination and the right ascension descending node. Now think back to how we did Hohmann transfers, which are the way that we change the size of our orbit. What if we want to change both the size of our orbit and uh, do a simple plane change? Well. One way to do this would be to conduct a simple plane change burn, uh, that's one burn, and a Hohmann transfer, which requires two burns, as you can see here. That's three different delta Vs, or burns. Another thing we could do is called a combined plane change, and as you folks will soon learn, this is actually the most fuel efficient way of changing both the size of our orbit and the plane. In a combined plane change, we're combining one of the burns of the Hohmann transfer with the burn for the simple plane change. We call this burn delta C for combined. This combined plane change could be done uh, when you do your delta V2, the second burn of the Hohmann transfer, or it could be done 
at the location of delta V1 of your Hellman transfer. I'll explain that in a second. <clears throat> Let's look back at the triangle we do, drew for delta V for a simple plane change. Now, for a combined plane change, the difference is that the final velocity vector is actually going to be a different magnitude than the initial velocity, unlike with the simple plane change. The difference in the final velocity vector's magnitude is due to the additional velocity from the Hohmann transfer, either delta V1 or delta V2. So, now we, if we want to determine how much fuel this will take, we need to solve for this new vector, delta Vc. And a little bit of geometry magic, the equation for delta Vc is the square root of V initial squared plus V final squared minus 2 times V initial times V final times cosine of theta. So, let's talk about V initial and V final for a second. Here we're showing a normal Hohmann transfer from orbit 1 to orbit 2, orbit 1 being the smaller one. Delta V1 occurs on the right side of the screen, putting the satellite on the purple transfer orbit. When the satellite is at apogee of the transfer orbit, we do a delta V2 and put the satellite onto orbit 2. That's how a Hohmann transfer worked. But what if orbit 2 is in a different plane than orbit 1? Well, instead of delta V2, we will do a delta Vc, where we do delta V2 of the Hohmann transfer and change the plane. In this case, the V initial is the velocity of the satellite at apogee of the transfer orbit, and V final is the velocity of the satellite on orbit 2. The key thing here is that we want to do the combined plane change at apogee of the transfer orbit because this is the place where the satellite has the least amount of velocity. This will lower the total delta V or fuel that our satellite needs to carry in order to get into its final mission orbit. And that is all I have to say about that. Hey everybody, it's Major Cunningham again. Just going to walk you through some examples of plane change problems today. So again, I uh, pulled out last year's homework, which is, a, I think, a good example, and I'll go ahead and press. So question one is a conceptual question. I'll let you guys look that up and listen in class and take notes. I am here for the math part. So the first problem says, a remote sensing satellite is in a circular orbit with an altitude of a thousand kilometers an inclination of 28 and a half degrees operators must perform a maneuver to change the inclination to 90 degrees calculate the total delta v required to complete this maneuver in the most fuel efficient manner assume both orbits have the same ran so this ends up being a very easy money kind of a problem your first step here we're told that we have a circular orbit with an altitude of a thousand kilometers so i'm going to write out my V circ equation which equals the square root of mu over r. Which r do we use? Well, the radius of our orbit, which for a circle is the same as the sum of major axis. And that's the same as the radius of the Earth plus the satellite's altitude. And that's going to give us 7378.137 kilometers so that's great so we'll go ahead and plug that in for this r Okay, that gives us about 7.35 kilometers per second. Okay, now that we have that velocity, we can pull out our equation sheet. Well, we should have it out already. 
we're going to use this uh, delta V sub S equals 2VI sine theta over 2. Okay, so let's break that down for a second. So what we want to know here is it's kind of interesting with other, you know, the delta V for a home and transfer, we, we literally were looking at changes in speed, right? We wanted to change from a bigger orbit to a smaller or a smaller to a bigger, which required either adding or, well, adding some speed or subtracting some speed from our orbit, speeding up to slow down or, or slowing down to speed up. With a plane change, you're using that fuel instead uh, to change the inclination of your orbit. So delta V sub S stands for delta V of simple plane change. In this case, equation sheet tells us that it's 2 times the initial velocity. Well, that's what we just calculated. Initial velocity means the velocity before the burn. And then sine of theta over 2. And this theta, let's see, I'll just write it up here. This theta is the amount of inclination change that you would like to accomplish. Oh, there we go. So we, we want to go from 90 to 28.5. So we have a lot of inclination change. We want to do 61.5. So just want to make sure my calculator is in degrees mode. Since that's in degrees, let's plug and play. 2 times 7.35 kilometers a second. Sine of 61.5 all over 2. Let's see how much delta V we need to make this happen. Whew. We need 7 point, I'm going to carry 3, 7.516 kilometers per second of delta V. Ouch. To give you some context, when the space shuttle was still operating, if it burned all of its onboard fuel when it was on orbit, it could it could achieve about three degrees of uh, plane change, of inclination change. So this problem is, is really extreme to show you how much delta V it would take to really make this happen, but no one in real life goes from 28.5 degrees, which is that latitude of Cape Canaveral, right, all the way up to a polar orbit. What we try to do instead is launch directly into a polar orbit, but it's a good example just for the sake of the, learning the problem. Okay. Now let's take things to the next level. This problem is called a combined plane change, and instead of just staying in the same size orbit and changing inclination, that was last scenario. This scenario or what we're going to try and do is an orbital transfer like a Hohmann transfer but at one of these points, one of these dots that I'm trying to draw here, one of these points we're also going to do a simple plane change. Now, there's actually an equation that combines those two. So that the burn that you do, whether it's in here or out here, you can you can efficiently combine it with the home and transfer burn. So here's what I here's what I mean. In a home and transfer. You have a delta V1 and a delta V2, right? Those combine to give you the delta V total of the maneuver. Hohmann transfers are transferring between two orbits with the same inclination. A combined plane change by contrast, also does a delta V, I should say by comparison, I guess, delta V1 and a delta V2, 
but one of these is going to also include a delta V simple, if you want to call it that, simple plane change, and then our total delta V will add up the same way. So let's just do it, and I'll show you what I mean. In the last problem, we used this equation right here, that delta V simple was 2 times the initial velocity times sine of theta over 2. Using similar triangle math and trig, the delta V combined plane change takes that equation, mashes it together with a home and transfer burn, and you get delta V sub C, which is delta V combined, and that equals the velocity right before you execute the combined plane change burn, the velocity after you execute the combined plane change burn, and the cosine of theta, and theta is again the inclination delta that you want to accomplish, the inclination change between the two orbits. So let's see how we execute that. First things first, drawing my picture here, we're starting off in a very low Earth orbit here. This is, this is 200 kilometers above the Earth, like nothing stays up there for very long. So what this looks like really is a parking orbit of a satellite. In a circular orbit, both are circular, we're going to go from inclination of 28.5, again, that's Cape Canaveral. So something is launching into a parking orbit from Cape Canaveral, and then we want it to put it in this very distant orbit, and this is actually the uh, semi-major axis of a geostationary orbit. Just happen to know that when you're in the biz. Uh, and then with an inclination of zero. Those are fundamental properties of a geostationary orbit, and of course, RAN is undefined when your orbit sits on the equator all the time. So... Here's how we do this. Thankfully, blissfully, the math is really, really similar to a Hohmann transfer. It's almost identical, and I add one more step at the end. And so really, if you learn how to do Hohmann transfers, you're also getting all the points for learning how to do a, a combined plane change. But there's one fundamental rule. This is really important. You want to accomplish the combined plane change burn at the most distant possible point from the Earth. And to make it more general, I'm going to say from the planetary body. So let's look at my picture. I'm going to label this guy as orbit one because he is the smaller inner orbit, the parking orbit. This will be our transfer orbit, this little dotted line. And then, of course, our mission orbit will be way out here at number two. Now, my two options are this. I can, I can take my home and transfer burn here at orbit number one, and I can combine that with my plane change. That's one option. Or I could wait and just do a normal home and transfer burn in here to get out of the parking orbit, and then do the combined plane change burn out here, which again, will combine that home and transfer, that second burn I'd have to do out here, with the combined plane change. This rule, this rule says that we should do our combined plane changes for fuel efficiency's sake. I'll write that. farthest from the Earth. So between these two options, um, I want to do my combined plane change out here because it's much, much farther. 42, 160 kilometers is a much bigger sign major axis than 6,500, right? On the order of six, five to six times as big, seven times almost. So let's see how that manifests. All right. Oh, I shouldn't. I don't want to write step one. I don't want you to think that's... Well, actually... Everything having to do with orbit one? Sure, I'll put it in step one. Let's do that. So remember the velocity we're going in orbit number one, I, I term V1. And then right after we do our first burn, that's VT1. VT2. And V2, we're going to calculate exactly the same way as before. So, and when I say before, I mean our home and transfer homework that we did last time. Uh, so, V sub 1 is a circular orbit, 
and I'm going to use radius 1, which again, we get to use center major axis straight off of what was given because we're not, like in the previous problem, we had to actually find, you guys remember we had to find our center major axis by adding the altitude to the radius of the earth. We don't have to do that because whoever wrote this problem was nice enough just to give us the center major axis raw. We don't have to worry about adulterating it in any way. So let's plug and chug as we do. I'm going to carry three decimal places just for the sake of efficiency. It's not as big a deal with home and transfer problems as compared to like the orbit prediction problems we were doing, but a ah, little precision is always nice. So, all right, let's now calculate V1. I'm not going to explain this part too terribly much because uh, it is so similar to the home and the, just the pure, simple vanilla home and transfer. You guys can take a look at that in the previous video. Remember that we're still using R1 here and our epsilon. We're going to use this definition of it, negative mu over 2a. What's a? a is, in this case, semi-major axis of the transfer orbit. And we're going to add the inner orbit to the outer orbit. And average them. It's going to give us 24,369 for the center major axis of our transfer orbit. So now we're ready to plug and chug. Okay, let's see what that gives us. Oops, I forgot to put parentheses there. Get times two. Here, so boom, 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 boom. Nine sixty-five seven eight. Just double checking my numbers. Something intuitively doesn't seem right to me. Two times twenty-four. Huh? Well, I suppose that's not impossible. Okay. So ten. We are going from a very small orbit to a very, very big orbit. So this is typically the kind of thing that we would use a second stage for, a rocket all to itself. Or we would use a, an Apogee kick motor that's attached to the satellite. That's Its only purpose is to go from Leo to Geo, because that's a big delta V. It's a lot of delta V. So. Or rather, that's a, a big velocity. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when we actually find the, the size of the first burn, you guys remember its absolute value of the transfer uh, v sub t1, sorry, so the speed right after our first burn minus speed over just our vanilla orbit. Okay, so that'll be 10.239er minus 7.784, and that will be 24 Five, five kilometers per second of delta V, <coughs> excuse me, for delta V1. All right, let's repeat that process for 
second delta V. All right, V1, or oops, V2 <laughs> equals square root of mu over R2, right? Speed of that second mission orbit, or second orbit, which is the mission orbit. Do some quick plugging and chugging. 42160. five kilometers per second okay and then the velocity right after we do ordinarily would do and this is where things get well i'll show you the extra step after this but again everything remains the same as the home and transfer mathematically until i tell you differently and i'll tell you differently in a second with the last step okay so again as before this is going to be semi-major axis number two, um, which is R2, right? And then this is going to be negative mu over two times A of the transfer orbit still. So let's plug and chug. What did we find? That's right, it was 24, 369. Okay, cool. Let's plug and check. Oh, not forgetting our two down there. Second, now, this is where we have to be a little bit careful because what we would ordinarily do is do that absolute value subtraction of VT2 and V2 uh, and then add delta V1 and delta V2 and we'd be done. If it were a home and transfer, here's the extra step though that sets it apart uh, from a home and transfer because we're also trying to accomplish our plane change and up here we decided we want to do our plane change out at this location because it is so much farther between the two possible home and transfer burns we're going to choose the outer one to do uh, to attach our simple plane change to and merge it into a combined plane change uh, because it's so much more fuel efficient so here's the extra step because we've chosen the second burn we're going to do this extra step we're going to append and add the second step to number two here let me show you what i mean let's first write the equation for the delta V sub C. It's initial velocity squared plus the final velocity squared minus 2 V I V sub F times cosine of theta. Uh, but wait, we never calculated an initial and final velocity, did we? It turns out we did kind of. <laughs> and what I mean by that is VT2 is the speed of this satellite screaming out towards its mission orbit right before we do this burn. V2 is the velocity after we do that burn. So what this plugs in as, you'll use VT2 for the speed right before you do your combined plane change. You'll use V2 as the speed of the mission orbit right after we do our combined plane change and life is good. And then of course you're using the same variables right here. Theta. Theta, we're going to calculate just the same way as we did for our simple plane change. And we're going from 28.5 degrees to zero. So in an absolute sense, we want 28.5 degrees worth of change. Okay, let's see if I can fit this in here. So our VT2 
is 1.598 squared plus 3.075 squared minus 2 times 1.598 3.075 cosine of 28.5 degrees. Ooh. So there's a lot. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. And I'm going to say our delta V combined plane change, which again, we're doing as far away from the earth as we can because that's most fuel efficient. Square him plus 3.075 squared minus 2 times 1.598 times 3.075 times cosine of 28.5. Oop, now we need one with parentheses. Good. 3.37. And great. I'll take the square root of that. Ah, so the delta V to both... Uh, get us from our transfer orbit to our final mission orbit, and then merging that together with a simple plane change to go from 28.5 degrees down to zero. That value we have just found to be 1.36 kilometers per second. Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle. Our delta V to get us from the inner orbit, parking orbit, to the transfer orbit, that's the, the other piece of the puzzle. And I'm just going to write the last step up here. I ran out of room as I often do. So in this case, for a combined plane change, for a combined plane change maneuver that we're also doing with a home and transfer. So how do I put this? A home and transfer for which one of the burns has a plane change, we call a combined plane change maneuver. So the delta V total is going to be delta V1 in this case plus delta V combined. So that's what? 2.455 plus 1.836. So all told, this whole thing is going to cost us quite a bit of delta V. At 4.29 or 1 kilometers per second worth of delta V. Now, let's see. Did we answer the mail on all this? Yep. From the initial order to the final order, the most fuel efficient manner possible. We've done it. This is an important phrase, the most fuel efficient manner, right? I keep harping on this. I could have tried and accomplish the plane change in here at this very low and fast parking orbit. But you guys remember the previous problem. The previous problem also put us in a pretty low Earth orbit. And just doing a plane change, although it was a pretty high amount of plane change we were doing, was 7.5 kilometers. That's just unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it can be done, but it's so costly that I'm, I'm not aware of any missions where we have actually done that. So what I'm trying to say is if you try and execute a plane change close to the earth, you're going to pay for it in fuel costs. So when the problem says maneuver from the initial orbit to the final orbit, and there's a size difference and an inclination difference, and it says we want fuel efficiency, which duh, everybody wants that, generally speaking, then your first step, draw a picture. Um, huh, I'll call this step zero, right? That's my first step always. Um, draw your picture. Say where you're going from outer to inner or inner to outer. We're going from an inner to outer, right? A small orbit to a big one, much, much bigger. And then select where you're going to do your plane change. Here's what I'm trying to get at. If we were going from a big orbit to a smaller orbit, like we were trying to bring our satellite closer into the Earth, we would still do our plane change out here. It's just that V1 would become our delta VC, and delta V2 would be, you know, we'd put ourselves in this transfer orbit and come back around here to delta V2, which would just be a normal delta V home and transfer. So anyway, the math works exactly the same. The only extra step is choosing where you're going to do your combined plane change, and you do that by putting it at the orbit that's farthest away from the Earth because you want the most fuel efficiency. Uh, and then actually executing the math 
for delta vc on whichever of the two that you're going to do your plane change at okay thanks guys we'll see you next time